Welcome to Archery Country Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to Archery Country Podcast. This is your host, Wade, as we're in the studio with Dano and Keith here at the Rogers location. And uh, we have to apologize. Before we get into today's podcast, which you already know what it's all about, we have a lot of questions, a lot of comments on where were we? What happened in October and November? Let's lay it out for you. Okay, so from May until October 16th is one of the busiest, and we say this every year, it's one of the busiest year it has been. Absolutely crazy. And for us to be professional, to know what we're talking about, we have to do some field studies. We have to hunt. So in October, November, we took off podcasts awaiting a bunch of new arrivals. And that's what we're talking about today. We uh, had one of the most listened to podcasts last year was Dan and Keith and myself. We went through the big three. We carry the big seven. Now we're going to be big eight bow companies out there. But the big three, we're talking Hoyt and Matthews and Bowtech. And the cool thing about this podcast is it's, it's three on one to the listener. We're not just saying cosmetics. We're not just how do they shoot. We work on these bows 300 days of the year. We're wrenching on them. We're tuning them. We're fitting them for different clients. There goes, there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes, not just what you guys see online or YouTube videos. We actually hands-on do this. So we give you a little insight. It's not all going to be cherries. There's going to be some pits in this. We're going to talk a little bit on some negative things and not throwing it under the bus, but more or less giving you a hundred percent true review on what we think. And I, it, we could go on for two or four hours on this, but uh, we'll keep it an hour for you and we hope you guys enjoy. Keith, Dan, how are you guys doing today? Morning. Good. Wonderful. How are you? I'm awesome. Just came off, I uh, did a little fashion yesterday. I saw that. And uh, my season is wrapped up. The cool thing about all three of us sitting here is we were successful this year, all with bows and had a good deal. We have, uh, for those of you that don't know, Keith had back surgery this year, so that limited him on his hunting. Yep, for and sure. And then also what you used. Yep, uh, yep, ended up crossbow this year. Which is still, it's cool, it's a bow, yeah. it's a broadhead, it's yep. a string, and, you're, and it's a very, very, very nice buck. Dan had an awesome hunt out west, a little bit long, but uh, you were successful. And then I was in North Dakota. It's funny, all three of us sitting here and didn't even shoot a mi- well, you're Minnesota deer. But yeah, uh, yeah. that was, uh, we won't disclose locations, but it was awesome deer. Oh, thank you. All right, let's break it down. Start from the top, go to the bottom, go from the bottom, go to the top on each and every build. We're going to start with Bowtech. First and foremost, a tip of the hat. We had Bowtech bows in the shop. Was it two weeks prior to release yeah, we date? Didn't, we didn't tell customers that. No, yeah, no, two, we, two, yeah. <laughs> a little, a little early. <laughs> like, we got to see them, and yeah. we got to shoot them. But uh, they were here for release date. We've sold some. It's been a bit, pretty good kickoff for Bowtech. I think, honestly, being the last of the big three, we're still kind of in that people checking them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's go through the lineup. They, had, they have an SR350, a CP28, a Revolt XL and a Revolt X80 are the four new ones from Bowtech. Might as well start out. These are all flagship bows. Uh, they're all going to be priced anywhere from that ten ninety nine, eleven ninety nine on up. Um, a lot of cool things that they did. We might as well start with SR three fifty. It took the place of the Solution, which was last year's thirty two inch bow. This year it is thirty three. Mm-hmm. Axle to axle. Uh, draw length, we can go from 25 inches to 30 inches on your draw length, and then you can get it in a 50, 60, or 70 pound max. And of course, you can bring it down from there. Um, your guys' thoughts. Now, we, we like the solution. We had a lot of success with the Solution SS as far as smoothness. Uh, the solution for the guys that are speed freaks. Last year, the solution I thought was a little bit stiff. Uh, if you guys listen back and we'll have a, we'll have a link in the bottom of this. You can go back and listen to last year's, uh, review. We're going to give each bow a, f- a five star rating or the bow company on that. Uh, I think they got away from the stiffness this year with the SR 350. I think it's a little smoother. Um, now we're all different draw lengths. Dan and I are pretty close. I'm 29 and a half. Dan's right at 29, uh, shorter 
because when we talk about draw lengths, there's 25 inches to 30. So 30 is the max. And I'm as close to max as we can get. I think it's, it's, it's a little bit smoother overall. And I like a 33 axle to axle bow. Uh, it fits me the, when we talk about string angle. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, <clears throat> I actually like a longer bow, even though I'm a shorter draw, just because of what you say, the string angle. Um, now, of course, this year I haven't, haven't had a chance to play with the new ones as far as feeling draw cycles and that, so we've got to rely on you guys for that. But uh, from what I hear, it, exactly what you're saying, it seems a little bit better than the solution. Um, I believe the solution is still a current bow in the lineup, but it's just I don't know if they made any changes to it, right? They're just leaving that. No, the yep, the solution is solution. Uh, you can still get it in 2022. Ooh, along with the Solution SS as well, but um, yeah, they have a, on a bunch of bows this year. Yeah, they yeah. do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the four with the new for 2022 stickers <laughs> is what we'll <laughs> yeah. concentrate on that. Um, Dano? I think it's smoother at longer draws. I think that was the biggest downfall with the Solution was um, it just seemed like it got a little clunky at 29 inches or longer. Well, this one's just a little bit smoother throughout the whole draw right. cycle, I think. And I, I'm not a speed freak. I think about it, but I don't concentrate on it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. I don't know what mathematician named it to 350, but you have to have it on. I, I don't know. I assume com- there's two settings is what I'm getting at. There's a comfort on the same mod as performance. So IBO speed, for those of you that don't know this, is 70 pound bow at 30 inches with a 350 grain arrow which nobody in their right mind anymore shoots 350 that's extremely light i don't think if you're coming in saying i want a 350 foot per second bow we're not i mean we have to do a lot of crazy stuff to get that to work so that's just ibo speed everything that we were yeah it's like unattainable that's that's with uh uh, no rest basically right loop yeah. Um, no peep site. It's just unattainable. It's, it's a very good word. I like that. So SR350, I hate when they name a bow, the, whatever they think it's going to be. It's DNA. scary SR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is smooth and it is fast yep. to a point. Um, I didn't, I guess the brace height on that, that's something that yep, we'll talk about. Six inches. About. Six inches. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty common. Yeah. Like we talked about last year. Six is like the new seven. Yeah. From Yeah. And any of the, like, better performing speed bows air quotes you know they all it seems like they're all going to be six inches yeah now. it's mm-hmm. not scary five right um it's just right there in the middle overall uh Botech has had a, their grip it, they have a clutch plate which you can ex, you can get two different angles i believe a standard mm-hmm. and then a like a 12 degree or i don't i don't even know it's what just more degree. of a higher risk yeah, yeah. yeah high risk style yep uh that's the only thing you can do with the grip mm-hmm. uh, you can tape it put some bomar tape on there tennis wrap that's one of the I think I think things. the grip is probably how do I even say it like the most awkward out of all the three, but it's probably it for me the most repeatable. Yeah, same with me. So that's yeah, it, it, like it just feels not right, but you shoot it really good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You do it. You place your hand the same every right. time. Yeah, it, your same shot. So that that's the SR three fifty. Or should we what should we rate each bow, or should we just the bow company Let's release do each bow? Okay. And then at the end, we'll just rate at the end. Yeah, so rate the company. Rate the company. Rate rate the company. Or rate each bow. bow. Okay, gotcha. CP28. Uh, The CP28, that's that's something new for Bowtech as far as a shorty. Right. They they haven't Uh, made a short bow in... Shoot well, before really we worked inches. here, it's been, yeah. Dan would be the only one. I don't, I don't even know. I don't know. remember anything under 30 inches. That's what really. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, I, hands down, CP28, the riser is badass looking. Like, it it's is like an RPM, cool. but, yeah. Yeah. Bullet, yeah. It's not going to yeah. blow up on you, though. <laughs> right. it, it is a 20. And it should be smoother. It is a 28-inch <laughs> yeah. bow that goes to 30 inches. Right. Which is something you don't hear very yeah. often. And the draw cycle's nice. It is. Yep. Like lots of valley to it and same bullets. Same grip, a little blockier. Mm-hmm. It's going to weigh a little bit more for those of you that, and what, I'm going to say this right out front. For people who worry about the weight of the bow, the total weight, then you better not be worrying about the weight you're going to be pulling an animal out of the timber or out of the back country. <laughs> because if you can come in and honestly tell me 3.9 pounds versus 4.6 is going to deter you, then I think you're going about it a little bit on the wrong road. Yes, 
you can weight a bow correctly below your hand a little easier if it's lighter but uh i will say that it's a little bit heavier than i expected for a short bow but it's a very beefed up beefed up um uh, riser the cams are a little different this year just a little uh every every bow company changes it just a little bit mm-hmm. but uh overall 335 feet per second uh 24 and a half inches so we can get real low on the draw spectrum 30 inches and of course you can get that in a 50 60 70 pound max that's a cheaper model at, i shouldn't say cheaper it's cheaper of the flagships right like 100 bucks is it 150 or 50 100 yeah, bucks somewhere in there yeah i think yeah i don't even what is the price of that thing i think it uh 11 nine, no I'll it. we're selling it for less than that right i don't know i can look it up while you guys are talking here i'll check right now just so we have an actual but no no matter what it is it's just a it's just a little bit cheaper for the simple fact of you have less material uh it's a smaller setup CP twenty eight. Uh, we're selling them for ten ninety nine. Okay, so pretty like good, nice pretty little good buy. tree stand. Yep, uh, ground blind bow. It's mm-hmm. it's nice. I like it. Yeah, and yeah, I think your stability platform is still there to a sense. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that's a CP twenty eight. Let's move next to the Revolt XL, which XL uh, rewind back to the Revolt X. And the Revolt series, which was one, two, three years ago mm-hmm. on their release. Um, when I shot Botec, I shot the Revolt X, and I shot it extremely well. It was a tack driver. I shot the, the, the Revolt X. This is an XL, which is still very, very fast. It's rated at 350 feet per second. But here's the deal, is we can reach out to 33 inches on your draw. So now Botec... But Forever and ever and ever, if anyone come in and they're a big dog skyrocketing the ceiling, 6'4", 6'5", 32, 33 inch, we, well, we don't have a Botech free to shoot, but we can get, and the one that we'd always went to is a BT Mag X X Mm -hmm. forever. And we sold quite a few of them Mm -hmm. for not having them on hand. Right. Now we have them on hand. We have one now, but we're getting more. Mm -hmm. Um, The platform of the Revolt X, I think, knockout job big guys that's the bow from you now you can still get it in a 27 and a half inch 27 and a half to 33 50 60 70 pound uh they did good i yeah. think they did really good on that bow i think that's a good answer to some of the other companies you know like matthew's doing the atlas and that i think it's a good uh yeah it's good basically comp. what they had prior but just the new just the a new little bit bigger and it, it was a very good selling bow yeah, yeah. Uh, oh very I, good i shot one i loved mine yeah yeah. No, not the XL, of course, but no, you're yeah, right. Okay, Revolt X80. This is an 80 pound bow. I don't. If I had a dollar for every time a guy came in here and said, "Can I get an 80 pound bow?" Well, yes, some bow companies we can't. Matthews, we got a switch weight mod that we can go 75. It's going to max out at about 77 and a half, 78. Why? I don't know. But if you want 80 pounds, now you have a bow. That's, and it is. It's 80, it is what it is. Revolt X 80 pound bow, 340 feet per second, 26 to 31 on the draw length. Um, that's going to be the most expensive bow of Botex lineup this year. And that's just $100 more. But that's an 80 pound begging. Mm-hmm. Um, so overall, the Revolt X 80. If you like 80 pounds, the bow's going to hold up. Every one of Botex cams, we can go from comfort, switch the mod around, go to performance. I, we get asked a lot, what does it do, do for your feet per second? And then average, depending, it has a lot to do with your draw length, but anywhere from 8 to 12, maybe mm-hmm. 14 on the very max. Yeah, pushing it. Yeah, but Aero yeah. build has to do with that too. Yep. Uh, I do not like the performance feel. Uh, <laughs> I have either. a hard time, and I don't really care about a draw cycle, shooting a target bow all the time, but I can tell mm-hmm. if it's on performance or if it's comfort. I don't, I don't really see the need for it, but it's there. Uh, do you, I mean, you guys, if you're, Dan, if you're going on elk hunt, would you? No. Because you still, it's still you got to be a controlled draw. We don't want a sky draw. You don't want to have to be, you know, three quarters of the way back and then uh, boom, dump. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just, and but like, it is available. On the other end of that, too, I do see guys that come in and 
uh, shoot it very, very well. You know, like that's, yes. they shoot in performance and, and they look like us drawing in comfort. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> butter. I mean, we're not going to name any names, but there's a guy in here that can bench 500 <laughs> yeah. and we'll put it on the, the 80 yeah. on performance. And he goes, Oh, I'll draw it pretty smooth. And I'm like, dude, what'd yep. you just do? <clears throat> Can't imagine the cable tension <laughs> that that baby <laughs> has going on. But, uh, anyways, all right. SR350 CP28 Revolt XL and Revolt X80. We have <clears throat> every one of these bows in the shop. We have a plentiful supply of the SR350s. Uh, we're waiting some more CP28s and the Revolt XL and the Revolt X80. Bowtech, I tip my hat to you. This year you done good. <clears throat> you got your bows out on release date. You actually have customers with orders that we're not talking... 17 months i mean it's they're doing good they yeah, they put them in the line now i'm not saying that that's not going to change you know after the big rush over the first into january february things will get backed up a little bit but they they have a quantity and a lot of other shops have them i meant brainerd and and weight park they, yep. they're available for you to shoot try out <clears throat> and then some of them you can even buy yeah we do have some available here in the shop so that's nice and like you said they did a great job this year as far as, you know, there's a good line, there's a good mix, and, and we have them. Cosmetically speaking, um, I always thought Botech Dan's over there dying just a little bit. I promise <laughs> none of us have COVID. We've all been tested. We're clean. Uh, just a little bit of the uh, junk that's going around. Well, well, too much coffee this morning. Yeah, he got some coffee grounds in there. Uh, cosmetically speaking, I don't, I don't find this to be the most appealing bow on the market, but face it, you're shooting a bow... If you want to buy something pretty, go buy something pretty. But overall, they did a pretty good job. Here's where we rate them, okay? On a five-star program, we have five stars being the absolute best. There has not been a bow since we started doing this that we've given five stars for. Uh, there has not been a bow that we've given one star for. Uh, as a company, on the 2022 new release for Bowtech, uh, from the SR350, I'm going to say it's probably going to be very, very tight. CP28, we're going to have a ton of guys buy in as well for the shorter stature, wanting a more compact bow. Revolt XL and Revolt X80, probably not going to be as big of a push, but they are there, and I think we're going to get some guys that like it, especially the XL. That's a great, great addition. I'm going to give Bowtech, and I'm, I'm the, the bad critic of everybody, but I'm going to say a solid three and a half stars for the overall deal. Uh, we didn't really change a whole lot from the SR350 in the solution. So eh, CP28, you're going to bump up a little bit on my scale of awesome. And then the Revolt XL and the X80, uh, they did a good job. I think uh, there's bright, bright things going on for Bowtech, but my rating's three and a half stars. Keith? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be pretty close to that. I, you know, like you said, not huge changes, um, if that makes sense. You know, they're all, they all have a, a similar look and feel, um, but a lot of good bows. There are some that are going to really, you know, fit a niche, um, and we're going to sell some of those for sure. Um, I would say, I was going to say three and a half, but you did that. So I'll say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say three and a half as well. Sorry. Oh, that's that's what it's all about. And people, you know, they want to hear this. Uh, I don't think we, we already gave a disclaimer on why. Um, yeah. You, you just did why. Yeah. Dan, and, Dan, Dan, so Dan is the veteran, right? Uh, I've been with the company in and out 10, 11 years now. Or is it 12? This will be 10, 12, yeah. Yeah, 12 years. So you've seen everything um, for a decade or more. <clears throat> When Dan, and Dan is one of the guys, along with Keith, that you get one of everything, and you shoot it, and you test it, and you, you run it in the field, you put different sights on, different rests, you're playing with draw lengths and all that. As far as like a field study and actually putting them to work, Dan might do a little bit more. I know he does way more than I do for every brand. Where are you putting Bowtech this year? I'm going to say like 3.2. I like the KM. Um just this year didn't really blow me out of the water. I think that's a solid bow. Yeah. Um, they just really didn't do much from last year to this year. So, yeah, I, th I think it's a nice shooting bow. I think it's a solid lineup. Um, 
they said it didn't blow me out of the water, but it's still, still a good offering. Absolutely. So three, five, three, five, three, two, average it right there. Three, three, five, yeah. pretty, pretty solid rating. Good job for Botech. Let's step forward. So this year we're going to, next we're going to go to Hoyt. Um, Hoyt out of Salt Lake City, Utah, been around forever, been one of our, our good sellers here in the shop, and it, they boosted, they like knocked it out of the park last year, I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a huge turnaround on all the RX-5s and the Ventum 30s and the Ventum 33s. This year, we have the RX-7, the RX-7 Ultra, that is going to be the two bows in the carbon lineup, and when we say carbon, a true carbon. Then we have the Ventum Pro 30 and the Ventum Pro 33. So let's just start uh, right in the front with the RX-7. This is going to be their 30-inch axle carbon bow, 342 feet per second, six and a quarter inch brace height. And they, they lighten the weight, 3.9 pounds on the bare bow, 25 to 30 inch draw length. There's going to be just two mods that we switch around for your draw length, depending on where you're at. And you can get this. This is something that woke me up this year. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds. Yeah, I noticed that as well. Like, whoa. Pretty interesting, yeah. Limb deflection. Talk about skews. 80-pound max you can get. uh, Back it down. And any time that we say these maxes, you can always back them down. But a bow will always perform its best with the limb pockets maxed out. Um, So, RX-7. Again, it's a 30-inch bow. It doesn't intrigue me to shoot it, but I did shoot it. The very first thing that we're going to get out of the gate, when you look at these new bows, completely redesign the carbon layout. Everything from the back in the carbon matrix through the red works, the RX-1, the 3, the 5, they had a huge tubular, and it even seemed to me like last year got really crazy snake wraparound look. Like three carbon tubes that come together. And very very bulky if yeah. you looked at it, right? Yep. It was. Uh, very, very stiff riser. Absolutely one of the stiffest risers you'll ever find. But uh, overall, you got it on your phone. Okay. Um, they stream, I guess, streamlined it. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. they just oh, yeah. shaved it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Um, it's still carbon, and it's still one of the strongest risers. If you guys rewind and go back to our Hoyt podcast last year, they actually explained why the carbon is so strong heat treated so on and so forth but uh it's a it's a cosmetic and speaking it's a no it's beautiful jam like, up yeah jam very up very nice looking bow it's like um <clears throat> they went from like carbon element to carbon defiant mm-hmm. carbon defiant was a lot slimmer um the only downfall with that riser is it flexed when you put it in the press it just right. flexed like crazy so then they went back to like the redwork series which was bulkier but maybe a little bit a little bit more solid on the press but this one has no flex to it. It's it's awesome. It is. Um, they also incorporated what we call the inline system. This word is going to be used in two of our bow companies. But last year they came out with a Picatinny rail system for you can you can buy a site with a Picatinny rail mount. That came separate in the owner's manual, and then you had to remove bolts and put in bolts and then attach this Picatinny rail, and it kind of like... Looked choppy. It, yeah, it was like, a, to me, it seemed like an aftermarket product, right? And I understand, Hoyt, like, it's new. Anything, time that anything's new. But this year, like, it's incorporated in. You're not taking it off. You can still mount a regular sight to it. When we say regular, on the side, on the right-hand side, if you're a right-handed shooter, left hand, if you're a left-handed shooter... But now their inline system, that Picatinny rail, is incorporated in. It's still a piece on the carbon bows. The aluminum bows, it's actually machined in. And we'll get to that in a second. But uh, that's a really, really cosmetically speaking, it flows. The lines flow. Another thing that really impressed me, and, and we, you can't argue it. Hoyt grip has been very sought after for a long, long time. It yeah, throats absolutely. your hand. It's very, very comfortable. Carbon bow is not hot or cold. It's a neutral. Now they have what they call the vital point grip. How could you perfect anything better than what they did? And somehow they did it. That's nice. <clears throat> uh, it decreases negative input from your palm. It's better accuracy. It's going to, you know, same grip every time. It's a little bit grippy, which I like. So you're not going to slip if you're sweating and you're, you know, an elk hunt and it's August or 
if it's cold and your hands are a little bit balmy or you're taking them out of your muff, it's going to be right there. It's going to be, you know, tacky and it feels very, very comfortable. Uh, they still have their little integrated shock deal with weights. We weighed it the other day. It's 3.73 ounces. It's like a mini stabilizer that you can put on uh, that stayed. They did put on some shock pods, I believe they're called. Mm-hmm. Top and bottom of the riser. Yeah, yeah, which I think you can go right or left on that. Or you could probably even get more if you wanted to weight it. But uh, overall. Cam's a little bit different too. HBX Pro Cam. Yeah, what, what exactly did they? Is, is, I think it's smoother. A little bit smoother. You know, that's what it was called last year was just an HBX Cam. Right. Now it's called the Pro. Pro um, yeah. And if you've, be, if you've been sleeping and you don't know what Hoyt did last year, they went to a true binary setup is what you can call it. Absolutely. Thank you, Hoyt. That's, hey, we even have, you know, we never ever do this, but there you go. Hey, hey, hey there they are. Welcome the uh, crowd up. That Kim, so we got him in. First thing I did is grabbed an ultra. Dan set him up, shot him. It blew my mind. No hand shock. No vibration. I mean, they, I mean, they tuned for Hoyt, really nice. which is super <laughs> impressive being they took mass out of that riser. They did, you know, it made it lighter. And that's the first thing you're going to is right. It wasn't there. Yeah. Um, and then this year they, it's significantly lighter. It's 3.9 pounds last year. was right. What? Three, or oh, sorry, uh, four, 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 five, five, four, four, six, right in yeah. there. Yeah. So it's quite a bit lighter and there's actually less hand shock this year too. Yeah, and unfortunately, all I can talk about is how they look and feel. <laughs> <laughs> so I rely on you guys for John. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping soon, though, we'll get to get the I job. Said, don't make again. me laugh. Or yeah, I'm like I said, they, they make a 40 pound max. So there you, go. Right. you never know. 30. <laughs> yeah, 30. 40, 40 pound max. Right, it's 40 max, 30. Yeah. You can back, back it to 30. 30. Okay. He's so 30 to 80. Yeah. That means, honestly, if, if a 25 inch draw, okay, my oldest boy is 10 and he shoots 23 inches in six months, he could be. I could literally set up an RX-7 for an 11-year-old kid in parameters, you know, in, in the perfect world. He's going to have to mow a lot. It's phenomenal. It's crazy. Mow a lot of lawn. He's got to mow a lot of lawn in the summer for that. We won't be doing that. <laughs> Daddy's got to get a Garmin before, <laughs> before he gets a Garmin bow. But anyways. But that's cool what you're talking about because yeah, it, like in the, in the last too. couple of years, that's, <clears throat> yep, exactly. Right. A couple of the bow companies have made it where – you can get the lower poundage and have a bow that performs just as well as anything out there, you know, mm -hmm. and you're not, you're not stuck in a, a kid's bow or well, a let's be bow. honest. The women's bow last year, their launch was the, called the eclipse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it shot nice. It just wasn't like, well, you had to have a specific mod yeah, and we never, say it's know, not it's super like, versatile. And it yeah. kind of felt like mm, just right. a little <laughs> chintzy. It's right. If, I, if a yeah. female wants a bow that just looks aesthetically really pleasing and, and still light, light. And, yeah right and shoots phenomenal and, and shoots very well you know. right um kudos to them for that i agree uh to the rx7 ultra uh if i was going to shoot hoyt that's where i would go it's 34 inches axle to axle bigger brace seven inch brace which is huge pounds. i think huge yeah yeah what was it again Four four point three, three. so mm -hmm. still lighter, it's still a bow yeah. that a thirty four inch bow <clears throat> goes that up to thirty two inches, yeah, thirty two yeah. inch draw goes up to down to what twenty seven, yep, twenty seven to thirty two. So you can still, I don't know very many besides Keith that's going to be in that twenty eight range that's right. going to shoot a thirty four inch axle, but maybe right, you know, all on the field options are, yeah. right. stability, mm -hmm. and then that brace height is huge. Um, I think hands down, you know, that's an overall. I would think better pick for your longer draw archers mm -hmm. but string angle and packing it in and whatever you're comfortable with we're not here to sell you on you know the difference of them but so awesome job on that let's switch over to their aluminum so they always have a carbon lineup and then they have an aluminum right behind it obviously considerably cheaper way cheaper uh the ventum pro and the ventum 33 pro the, the, the they didn't change the riser. I don't know if they did or if they didn't. Well, and we're every one of these bow companies. We're going to have a podcast specifically to that bow company, so we'll answer a ton of these questions. Really, but, specs though it's it's very similar to last year. It's got a little bit different cam on it. The the new yeah uh, pro, pro cam, cam, and then everything is integrated with the inline system that's machined right in the riser for the site. We've uh, we've sold a couple already, mm -hmm. and. 
And surprisingly, one of our, our great customers went, he's always shot an aluminum bow this year. Now he stepped up to the carbon. Mm-hmm. So he said, and I will agree with him on this, that after the shot, that little thud, you know, when the post shot vibration or that sound or the feel, the aluminum bow is still an aluminum bow. It, um, uh, it's more of a, it's not a twang, but it's a plaque. You know, more like that. Yep. Where the carbon, I believe, when I shot the Ultra, is thump, just a thud, just real dead. I don't know. Is it, and the, <clears throat> it's supposed to be hollow, right. I believe. I found that last year even, going from the aluminum to the carbon with the Hoyts. And it was surprising, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, there, so there is a little bit of difference there. And you can feel it. You come in and shoot them. 33-inch in the aluminum. Uh, pretty forgiving. Brace height is 6 and 3 eighths. The Ventum Pro 30, 30-inch model. On uh, the aluminum is going to be a six inch brace height, so back to our norm. So uh, overall, it's it's a little bit cheaper setup, aluminums versus carbon. But you really you got to you have to shoot them to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we say this a lot in archery. It, it's an investment if you go with carbon, <clears throat> but there's so many pluses I think to shooting a true carbon bow over I, I should say hoyts carbon bows um there are some carbon bows out there where they're not as enjoyable to shoot yet are they getting there possibly i'm having a hard time we got three persian donuts sitting right in front of us <laughs> whoever brought them over uh, anyways <laughs> so hoyt awesome job rx7 rx7 ultra ventum pro 30 and a ventum pro 33 they have some new accessories. Oh, back to the Ventum, that inline or the Picatinny rail yeah, system. <clears throat> machine that's right actually in. a machine, and yeah. it looks phenomenal. Yeah, looks I personally nice. have not. I've mounted a Picatinny rail to the new Carbon, but I haven't put one on the aluminum. The fit, the feel, the QC is it all there. Like it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be very, very solid. It's not a piece. <clears> it's <throat> the riser, so it's direct connect. I guess you could say. Yep. Yeah, it's made for it. Yeah. And when what that does is it puts your sight in the front of the riser rather than on the right side or left side the rest we didn't even talk about but they had that last, last year. year yeah the integrated. you can get an integrate system it's a dovetail now there's getting to be more and more rest companies it used to be just qad mm-hmm. had an integrate and theirs is the only one called an integrate system right um we can talk about them but we can talk all but one right correct yeah uh, hamsky's coming out their release it's not a integrate system but you can connect it to the dovetail they got three different mounts yeah uh qad in my mind still like rock solid it's a two-point connection it's never gonna fail as far as the connection point of it uh we've shot them in the cold we shot them in the heat it is a cable driven rest Mm -hmm. Uh, as long as they're timed out right super super solid the integrate system yeah and then like wait so there's one other one coming in january so yeah keep yeah. tuned yeah. yep we won't uh spill the beans but we kind of open the bag a little bit pay attention to that um new garmin zero a1i pro is going to be a picatinny there is that option garmin zero a oh yeah they have a hoyt one yep. we have sold them they're here yep. <laughs> um anytime any i think that is one of the smartest things to do Garmin makes that site, right? A1i Pro. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would never not go with the Pro now. A ton of advancements. We're not here to sell Garmin's, but anytime that a company takes the same product and just brands it, changes a few things, why, if you had a Hoyt bow, why wouldn't you get a Hoyt? Right. Mm -hmm. If you had a Hoyt bow, why wouldn't you get a Hoyt rest? You know, you you don't have to, but you can. Uh, Their stabilizers, we haven't seen yet. We haven't seen their new quivers, but Mm -hmm. they are they look pretty nice yeah, mm-hmm. super light quivers are called um they also have something that i don't think has been pushed a lot they they kind of copied a little bit some products that have been out on the market but when we talk about their little kickstand thing uh go sticks go sticks <laughs> yeah so you can so. you know, it's an actual block that you mount to the bow and then your stabilizer goes in that block yeah, so it mounts in the bottom part of the riser where that little stubby stabilizer goes. So you yep. pull it off, thread that in. Looks decent, though. It for does. You know, hunting for ground yeah. blind hunting and stuff. Yep. Yeah. Or, you know, practicing in the backyard. Yep. I don't know what the vibration is going to be like. 
with that. We we haven't had a set in the shop to play with yet. Right. Uh, we will be getting them, but they have a they have a whole system, an accessory system. Their their new quiver mount. Thank you so much, Hoyt, for not having four different lengths that we got to like figure out what's going to work with whatever is going on. Now we just turn a little dovetail, push it in, or push it out. Simple. Overall, uh, I went first last time. Dan, you go first this time. On the overall release, <clears throat> take all the negatives and all the positives. Put, oh, we didn't talk about the twin <clears throat> turbo. I was going to ask you about that. Didn't talk about the twin turbo. That is last year's Rise. riser with turbo limbs and cams. Yeah. And that one's gonna, that's going to be your speedboat. That's going to be a 350 feet per second. It's, it is 33 inches axle to axle. Five and seven eighths brace height, four point four five pounds, and that's where you're getting last year's risers, mm-hmm. where that weight's coming from. Uh, Twenty five to thirty, and then that one there. Surprisingly, they didn't make an eighty pounder, mm. so it's thirty to seventy pounds right. on that. Um, so if you want a little more gusto, if you like a little bit faster reacting bow, shorter brace height, they do make the turbo on last year's platform. Mm-hmm. Probably not going to be one of my top four bows this year but it is available. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've shot the, the older turbos and it, they shoot nice. They're they just do. Little, they, little, this is a much yeah. smoother turbo yeah. than ever before with the, having the binary system. Right. Right. So that is a plus for them. Kind of cool putting it in the longer platform too, and still keeping the speed. Yeah. On a 33 inch, mm-hmm. um, I can see guys that are, you know, maybe like a little flatter trajectory, like a little more pull, um, you know, you still have the ability to go 80 or 85% on that, which we don't really talk about, but let off. I think there's some YouTubers out there and there's a lot of guys that follow what YouTube says. We see it this year since the release. Um, everybody's wanting to shoot 80%. And a lot of them aren't because they're going out West and the state requires it. I think they're just getting a different feel and it may work a little bit better but you have the ability to go 80 or 85% on, and you don't have to buy a particular part or a different mod. You can just do it on the same mod. Uh, Hoyt does that. And, and they have a pretty, pretty solid back wall. Uh, you can still yeah. get a little sponge out of it. That's what Hoyt's kind of been known for for a long, long time, unless you reconfigure the stops. Yeah, but they've come a long way. I really like their cams now compared to, you know, five years ago, three years ago. Even, yep. You know, uh, Dan, what would you give uh, on a rating? Hmm. I'm going to say 4.2, but I'm not, I'm not overly impressed with the Venom series, right. but I'm very impressed with the RX-7 series. So it's kind of like, a, I, like I really like the RX-7. That's actually what I ordered for one of my bows. Okay. Um, I don't even know what I'd rate that one individually, but I love it. It's awesome. Um, the, the Pro just doesn't. They didn't do a whole lot, kind of like the Bowtech. They they put a different cam on it, different grip. Shoots nice. Right. We're going to do really well with them this year. Um, hats off to Hoyt for doing a, a binary cam yep. like they did last year. So I'm going to say, yeah, 4.2 overall, but maybe nice. leaning towards the carbon that impresses me and, you know, mm-hmm. the aluminum. It looks nice, but like I like the carbon. looks nice. Yeah. Either. Yeah, I agree. Um, again, haven't got to shoot them, so that I'm going to err on the side of caution with all these bows because yep. I haven't been able to shoot them right. personally. So yep. I got to rely on you guys. I would say, until I shoot them, just like Dan said, you know, the RX series is just big changes, awesome this year. I love them. Um, really looking forward to shooting them. I'm going to say, I'm going to say a solid four. Okay. Um, uh, we so we're, we're still talking about the five that were released. There's actually a sixth one. Uh, we don't have it in the shop. It's for the big boys. It's called the High Line. Uh, it's 36 and a half inches axle to axle, like it's huge, and it has a seven and seven eighths brace height. It's almost five pounds, but we can get out to 34 inches on the draw. It takes a special human being <laughs> to be that long to where and like we it's not just the bow we got to worry about we got to worry about certain arrows we got to make sure the rest is going to work because there's they're drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing they're five inches longer draw length than me at 29 29 and a half 
Uh, that's the high line. We don't really, we didn't talk about it. Hold on. It is one of their flagship setups, but it's not one of the main five. I'm going to say four. If we have RX-7, RX-7 Ultra, Ventum 30 Pro, and a Ventum 33 Pro. I'm going to uh, go just a little bit higher than you guys this year on Hoyt's lineup. One, because of the accessories. One, because of the Picatinny rail built-in system. That having that quiver, uh, they shoot extremely well. I'm going to bump it up to 4.4, four, 4.5, four, right in that range. The carbon shoots, hands down, phenomenal. Um, I'm not a guy that shoots a whole lot of different Bogu companies anymore, but I have. Uh, I'm going to put them right there at 4.4, four, 4.5. Four, um, very good job. And readily available, the bows that are in the shop. Yeah. Now ordering, we've been told they're going to be backlogged just a little bit. You know, if you want a certain color that we don't have or you don't really customize as much on the Hoyt lineup as other companies. But overall, just a, a very, very solid, solid release, solid company. They've been around forever, Ingenuity, um, and they still, I, I'm going to say it hands down, they still own the carbon market. Yeah. I don't think anybody comes close yet. Yeah. Uh, there's another company out there that is trying, and they better. do good, but uh, we just, hands down, if you want a carbon bow, high-end carbon bow, this is where you're going to go. RX-7, RX-7 Ultra, Ventum 30 in the aluminum, Ventum 33 Pro, the RX Twin Turbo, and then the Highline. So good job to Hoyt. That worked. Yeah, nice job. All right. Now the one that's going to take the longest. But it's really not going to take the longest because we're only talking about two bows. Okay, it's only two bows, yeah. But that's all they had to do, honestly. <laughs> right. One of the most award-winning, best-selling platforms is Matthew's V3 lineup last year. I'm going to say it right out because we we deal with it on a day-to-day deal. Well, what did they change? They didn't have to change a whole lot on the platform of the bow, but what they did to the bow to make it more user-friendly. Matthew's 2022 lineup. We have the V3X series, a V3X29, and a V3X33. Before we get into specs, what is the ideal bow? Like, what's the ideal axle-to-axle length this day and age? Boy, I, th- I think it's, you know, depends on the person and, and the application. Um, I, I, I'm a short draw, but I still like shooting a little bit longer bow. Now, this year with that 29-inch, you know, the riser is so big on that thing. I mean, it shoots like a like any of the 31, 32-inch bows that you had in the past. Yeah. And for me, that's going to be a, a, a fun one to play with. So we actually put them side by side, like a 29-inch V3X29. The riser is comparable to a TRX34. It's, yeah, as big. On the 33, it's bigger than the 36 yeah. riser. Stability comes from riser length. Your axle to axle has more because we're talking a reflexed limb. So if we were to go back in the day and have the limbs just coming, you know, but not parallel, we'd be looking at a 36 inch bow, but we, we got it down. So there's a 33 inch model and a 29. Um, I think that's the right category. Last year they had a 27 and a 31. The year before that they had a 28 and a 31 and a half. Yep. Now a 29. Um, phenomenal bow and then a 33 which is as stable as a target bow as you can get in a hunting platform so those are the two setups they did change the brace height just a little bit this year Mm -hmm. uh on the 29 it's going to be the straight up six inch which we kind of got accustomed to with matthews but on the 33 we went to six and a half inches so a little bit more forgiving and we, we get that question a lot well why is it more forgiving on a longer brace height, you're going to have a slower bow, but your arrow is released off the string just a little bit sooner than a shorter brace height. I mean, it's it, geometry just shows you that that's what it is. So when you're shooting, if you have any torquing issues or if you're in a high tense situation where you may be, you know, a different angle, it's going to be a little bit more forgiving. But six inch, like Dan said in the beginning of the podcast, six inches of the new seven. Right. And the bows perform. Efficiency is a word that we use very, very much in this shop. Uh, they're very efficient. They still kept, it's a little bit different cam, and we'll get to the system on what they switched in it, 
but it's still got the switch weight mods, which a switch weight mod controls not only your draw length, but also controls your weight as long as you don't mess around with the limb pockets. 60, 65, 70, 75. You can back it off from 60 down to 40 if you need to for lower draw weights. Uh, still performs very, very good, but a bow, like you say, always performs best when things are maxed out. They come in a little hotter, 62, 67, 73, 77, brand new, yep. or a new set of strings or something on there. But uh, they, 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 sh- they, they are, f- I'm stuttering here. <laughs> um, You're looking at those donuts again. I am. Hands down, no shot vibration. Hands down, dead. You shoot it, bump. Um, very, very few times do we have anybody say the word vibration when they shoot the new Matthews. If you put on a 15-inch stabilizer that's not meant, you know, there's going to be some vibration that the bow's working. They do have a little mini harmonic dampener down on the bottom uh, that works. They don't have limb. They don't need rubber don't, yeah, things in the limb. They don't really need them anywhere else in the riser, uh, the engage grip. Uh, but hands down, just a very, very vibration-free bow. And that's something they've worked at for a long, long time. And we're talking, you know, there's also decibel. It's very, very quiet. Um, the engage grip is the same. You can shoot it with side plates and engage grip, which are the full engage grip, or you can get aftermarket grips. They have the center guard technology. They left the same as last year. Again, a lot of the same platform. The riser is different. Different cutouts. It's shaving down just a little bit. Yep. And that leads us right into where we're going. What did they change? Okay, starting with the cams, they have what we call a stay a field system. So a archer can actually work on his bow, take the string off, take a cable off. You can't take the yokes off with this system. But in the, in the field, you can, if you, if you happen to need to change your string or rotate your peep or whatever it is. Uh, we played around with it a little bit. Right, um, and like you said, your your yokes are never going to fail on you. I mean, I'm not going to say it's unless you cut not, them. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, like, you, if you cut them, you're right, right. and that's anything. Right, right. but know, like, but, yeah, if anything's going to possibly fail, be your cables or or strings. Yep. And I think that system is going to be huge for the guys that go out west. Yeah. Like, I always take two bows. Yep. You know, but, and I knock on wood, I've never needed one. Well, even if it's a guy that's just shooting at home and his peep is twisting and yeah. he feels comfortable yeah, for sure just yeah if you're, if you're or something. 45 minutes 60 minutes from a pro shop yep and we we chain we do a lot of that you know peep rotation it's it's very yeah, simple for point. us but like dan says now you can do it at home mm-hmm. uh if you have the system it's a cable you have to purchase the 33 is different from the 29 yep but it's a stay of field you can use one stay of field system for the cables and the string you just have to you can only do one at a time yeah, one piece at a time right so uh uh, it's huge. Uh, we set up a, a customer came in. He took, we set up the bow with a peep, a nose button, D loop. We tuned it. We took those strings off, put a brand new set of strings on, peep, D loop, nose button. He took his factory strings, put them in a bag, paper clipped together, and that's going to stay in his bow case. He's got the stay of field system and he's got his new set. So, like, literally, we don't have to see him, or we probably won't see him for a long time because he's already ready. Right. Mm hmm. He's the same guy that'll probably get six sets of strings this year, but you know, it, that's, that's neither here nor there. So that's what they changed on the cam. One of the biggest things you're going to see right away is what we call bridge lock technology, which is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like dude. And it's, it's super cool for, especially you guys that have watched the Matthews on Facebook, social media, Instagram, uh, YouTube, like how they came up with this. I forget the guy's name. And we're going to talk to Matthews in the next week. Um, he actually had like, he drilled some holes in a riser existed and put two carbon tubes in and then mounted a site to it. And that's how it started. And then they made a nice little cutout. You have to have a dovetail bar on whatever site. It, by the time that you get your new bow, if you don't already have it, there's going to be almost every site so will be, be able to do it. of choices. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they teamed up with Excel this year and made a five pin micro adjust site that we sell here in the shop. It's bulletproof. It's short. It fits in nice. Uh, we sold a ton of spot hog, black gold. All of our guys that are running black golds, they're coming. Yep. It's it. The old dovetails do not fit, but the new dovetail will. Uh, I do, Did I have permission to say that? <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. It, it's that's common knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's common. Yep. So you can literally take any if I'm I think there's only like four or five sites out of their whole plethora that you can't put this bracket on or dovetail, but you can. And we got guys that have already bought them. They're just going to wait on that. Right now they're running them standard. They just don't have the quiver on. Uh, so bridge lock that was hands down the best ingenuity that I've seen out of any company this year. It's going to be a game changer. Yep. We put the weight center, center gravity right above your grip. It works out good. The reason that they did that is they have a new low pro quiver. You can get it in two styles. You can get a detachable and you can get a fixed two piece. The detachable honestly is a two piece that you can detach. Yep. You can shoot with it on your arrows have an arrow cage on the bottom now, which Matthews has never had. So, and you know, the old HD and I say old, you can still put them on. They're still a very good quiver. But if you did shoot with it, your arrows would go down on the bottom because there's nothing holding the bottom down by the fletching. Now there is, and you can remove it. I haven't, I haven't figured out. I think I'm going to run one of each on my 33. I think I'm going to run the detachable because I like to take it off and you can put it in your pack or, you know, you still have your quiver or put it in the tree. And then on my 29, probably the fixed just because they're always there. But I don't, until I play with them, like shooting past 20 yards, I don't know yet, but it's the low pro quiver. They still have the IMX rest or the integrated dovetail on the back. You don't have to run the IMX. You can run any, any of the rest. That was a hit. The stabilizers are the same. Um, the, but the riser is just a little bit different for that whole aspect. Yeah. And I think it's a huge, you know, it's like the center guard last year was a minor change that to me was something that was 30 years in the making. You know, I kept, I always said, you know, why, why don't they have balance? Mm-hmm. You know, yep. why can't you figure that out? Well, same thing here, in my opinion, we, you, you can run everything so low profile and center. It, it just changes the whole feel of the bow and it's just, it's great. I think it's going to set standards. Now I know Hoyt has the, you know, the, um, Picatinny. Yeah. That's going to be, you know, that's everybody's kind of leaning that way right. now and it, cause it makes yep. sense. Yep. And, and things like this in, in the world of archery, like they're not a gimmick. If more than one bow company is doing it, it's not a gimmick. Uh, the integrated dovetail system, there's, the big four, I guess you could say bow companies. There's one that we didn't talk about today, but we're going to talk about in the future. They have it. Um, Bowtech is on the CP 28 mm-hmm. has a integrate or a dovetail system. Cut out. Yep. Um, and then Hoyt does. And then Matthews of course is where we first seen it. Dan, uh, I don't, I forgot. Are you getting a 33 mm-hmm. and Keith, so uh, the only bow I've ordered so far is a 33. Um, I'm going to order at least one or two more until I can shoot some. I haven't decided. Right. Yep. So the 33 I have an order, that's going to for sure be my 3D bow this summer. And yep. then I have to figure, figure out what I'm going to hunt So, with. and that's another thing. Like the 3D, you know, last year they came out, was it last year the TRX 34? Uh, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be a hybrid. You could use it. It's meant for a target bow, but you could shoot it, you know, and it was just a little bit loud. It wasn't the V3 platform. The V platform, I should say. Right, yeah. The 33, hands down, could be a phenomenal target bow. Right. You know, for guys that are shooting spots all winter long, you can rig it up however you want to rig it up or shoot bow hunter class. Right, it's a bow that'll do it all. Yeah, It will, That's and awesome. it's still deadly quiet and no vibration, and you can easily transfer it over. If, if I was going to be, if I was struggling to become one of the best archers that I possibly could be, 33, boom shoot all indoor, shoot turkey. I don't care if I'm in a blind. 33 inches is still very doable. Right. And then go to a bunch of 3D shoots in the spring and the summer and then switch it over for hunting. I'm shooting the same bow. I'm not doing anything different. Might switch out some mods, but, you know, it's very, very good job. The 29, I think I ordered one of each. I'm going to I'm gonna shoot both. I'm going to put them to the test. One is going to be suitable for me versus the other, but I'll still use both of them in different circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, there's still, I think, oh, sorry, but, I, mean, no, but I was talking about, I think the 29 is going to be, I, I want like you say, more versatile. I think it's, I think and it's you can still get shoot it for 3d. More. Yep. You exactly. Know, you can still shoot at long range. It, 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 there's nothing that says you can't take an animal at 70 yards with a 29 inch bow. Right. 
that's axle to axle riser like you I say, said especially 32 that, 33 yeah, inch, that 29 know. inch mm-hmm. yeah for sure all right um keith you go first this year we have a lot of stuff that carried over yep and then we have a lot of new stuff the inline you don't have to go with the complete system but it's meant to run the complete system you can shoot at one of either you you're not going to be a happy medium you're going to either go the way we've been doing it for 15 years or you're going to go to the new style right um overall you've worked on a bunch you set some up again you're not you haven't shot them but overall rating yep so i would typically when i see a line of bows that from year to year they just change a number or a letter i get a little turned off yep but this you know as far as this one goes there's so many sm- small changes yep. that make a big difference yep. that i think it's a i think it's a home run um i would say Four and a quarter. Fair. Yep. Dano. I'm going to say 4.4679. <laughs> I love it. I think it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not, it's, it's, com- it's not common knowledge, but it is. Uh, I, I like Matthews. Love Matthews. If there was a bow this year, that would come as close to a five star rating as it could get. I would put Matthews, the V three twenty nine X and the thirty three there. I cannot give him a five star rating. For the simple fact is if you switch over to the system, y- you might have to switch sites or buy some accessories, which adds a little bit of money. Uh if you want to go with the low pro quiver, you it's gonna be a little bit of a money. The rest, so on and so forth. I say 4.8 stars. Oh, doggy. As is close. That's one of the highest ratings that we've had. Um, but, and you know, I, I gave Hoyt one of the highest ratings out of all three of us. But uh, hands down, a phenomenal launch. At first I thought, ah, uh, okay. But no, it's, it's legit. Yeah. Everything's legit. Uh, they tune. We didn't even talk about Hoyt. Well, we did a little bit. Hoyt's tuning. Yeah, they got tuning. Yeah, yep. Super easy to tune. Bowtech, deadlock, cam system unbelievably easy to tune yeah, yeah. all three and, of them and i hate to like i felt like i almost docked Botech a little bit this year just because it didn't change much but they still have the best tuning bow out they, yeah, they do for you sure can't tell me that and, it, and a customer you don't have yeah, a little like five minutes with us showing us how we'll show you how to do it you can broadhead tune bear shaft if tune. you like to tinker yeah. the Botech is your bow yeah. I mean, yes yeah. if you have a press hoyt and matthews yeah. or we do it for you for free mm-hmm. if you buy the bow from us very easy all three of them the days of tuning nightmares have kind of kind of slowly gone away a little bit on new releases i i, I yeah i think if you have the correct arrow set up you're you'll be just fine now the guys that are shooting 12 year old you know carbon express maximas and they're putting 300 grains in the front it you know that's that's when stuff starts right. getting yeah. a little bit yeah. goofy so and, and we're here to correct help arrow you. on yeah. um we we're not spilling the beans we're opening the bank like we said we are going to do an arrow setup this has been a year in the making because we're treading lightly i'm not offending anybody that's uh i think three podcasts away it's already started but we got to finish it there's going to be a whole panel of different views but there's going to be statistics and videos attached to this like actual testing what is that right arrow build for the new bow that you got let us take care of you, steer you in the right direction, do a little research. We'll get you where you need to be. But all of the bows that we talked about today should have no problem. There's only the super, super, super heavy dogs and the super, super light with fixed blades. We got to kind of mesh the two. But we're not here to talk about arrows. So we were, <laughs> on average, we said 4.3 on Bowtech. Or no, we were a little less than that. Yeah, no. 4.3, four, so four, 4 on Hoyt. And then four, five, four, six on Matthews. Yeah, and and as a disclaimer, as I get to shoot the bows, I'm sure my numbers will go up. Yep. So nobody nobody be offended by me. No, not at all. <laughs> we uh, we appreciate. It. We hope you guys really thoroughly enjoy this. Is it's a and we don't get a chance to go up to Brainerd and Wait Park and talk on this bow review. We've kind of started this and we do it here. Um, the guys up there have their opinions and they can help you. We're here. We are not brand specific. We recommend shooting all of them, finding the right fit for you. 
we hope this just gives you a little insight on what we think and what we're working with. But uh, we're going to cut it short because we got to open the shop and uh, sell some bows to you guys. On behalf of everybody at Archery Country, thank you for subscribing and uh, liking everything that we've been putting out on our social media pages and also from our podcast platform. We got a ton of them coming to you. On behalf of everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Thank you for listening to Archery Country Podcast. 